In the quest to make my RC Roomba go even faster, I made stronger parts, added more grip, improved the controls, added aero, and then hit the track. A little while back, I built the world's fastest Roomba. I managed some fast runs despite some failures along the way. I was happy with the performance, and I even submitted my runs to Guinness World Records. But they claimed my record attempt was classed as a product or company record, which is essentially a pay-to-win world record. And they rejected my application. But I'm not going to let that stop me from going even faster. So let's start by fixing some of the bits and pieces that failed last time out. The gearbox mounts were printed with PETG. The Roomba weighs 4.5 kilos, which is three times that of a 1 10th scale RC car. So these parts have a pretty tough gig. Some of you suggested some better materials. So I'm going to try printing these again using high temperature nylon carbon fibre. This filament is sensitive to moisture and my filament dryer is a little underpowered. So I used one of the utility functions of the Bamboo Lab X1C to do the drying work for me. This will ensure that the parts are printed nice and strong and also look good. The parts look very nice and the nylon is noticeably stiffer than the old PETG ones. I fitted those parts and then I printed wheels in nylon as well. I designed some new moulds for the tyres and printed them in PLA. The new moulds are two-piece so that I could incorporate some tread into the tyres. This is the same urethane as I used last time. It's really durable, but it is nasty stuff. But only if you live in California, which I don't. I measured the two parts up by weight and added 1% of a fluorescent pink pigment. This worked way better than the unknown pigment that I used last time. The urethane was hard to pour because of the cold temperature in the workshop. I would bring it up to room temperature first next time. The next day it was time to pop them out. And they came out really well, but did need some cleaning up. The pigment glows under UV light, but I think you'd need to use a lot more than 1% to get any real effect. The Roomba uses differential steering, aka tank steering, just like a standard Roomba does, but this proved to be a real handful to control and resulted in some of the damage that we've just repaired. Some of you suggested that I add a gyro to help smooth out the steering control, so I picked up a Dumbo RC transmitter, which I have to say is kind of a dumb brand name. But it's cheap, it works with differential steering, and has a gyro built into the receiver. I activated the gyro on the receiver, and that was when I learned that the gyro only works on one channel. So I don't think this is going to work with my setup. We'll see. A spoiler was one of the most requested upgrades. Now, this has been done before, but I took it a step further and designed a full aero kit, then printed it in nylon carbon fibre. The diffuser attaches to the dustbin. There is a splitter for the front. This piece tidies up the airflow underneath and also doubles as a chassis brace to stiffen things up. And of course, a completely over the top wing for the rear. I had problems with my onboard camera mount last time out, so I repurposed one of my other designs to make a more aerodynamic mount for the front of the Roomba. And now it's ready to hit the track for some testing. Uh, yeah, I couldn't afford to rent that track. So instead, 
I went to Wodonga's premier RC car track. Situated on the banks of Australia's longest river. There was plenty of water around, but not as much as the last time I wanted to bring the Roomba here. I scouted the track and tidied it up and we were ready to go. I'm using two 4 cell LiPo batteries, one to power each 775 motor and planetary gearbox. It's time to see how the new setup performs. The straight at this track isn't long or wide enough for a speed run, but there's plenty of room to get it dialed in. It took a bit of messing around with the radio settings to get it handling reasonably well, particularly the endpoint adjustments for both channels. And this is when I decided to turn the gyro function on. I think I'll just leave that off for now. That was a pretty successful test. I swapped some paint with the track, but everything held up to the demands. And if I can get it to go around corners, I should be able to make it go in a straight line. Right? I headed to my favourite back road drag strip to see if I could go faster again. I did a handful of low speed runs to get a feel for the road. I was having real trouble getting traction, and I couldn't keep it pointing straight. I managed one 50 km an hour run, and then I pushed it too far and destroyed the Vroomba. Oh. It shattered into four parts. One of those parts, the dust collector, disappeared down a stormwater pit. This couple, who turned up while I was filming for a quiet picnic in an industrial estate, had front row seats of the whole mess. On the upside, the voltage converter and GPS speedometer that are housed in a dust collector somehow managed to escape the drain. The Roomba hit the gutter at 44 kilometers an hour. Hmm. I picked up what was left of it, and then I had a look in the drain. And there was my dust collector, at the bottom of the stinky pit. Not sure that I can recover that. Back in my workshop, I assessed the damage. I thought the onboard camera had survived, minus its lens protector, but unfortunately it was dead when I tried to connect it, so I lost the onboard video. I was a little surprised to see that most of the damage was on the actual iRobot Roomba chassis, not the 3D printed parts. The aero was mostly intact, bar some minor damage, which is pretty impressive considering the impact. 
I couldn't see any damage or fractures to the motor mounts or rims. So the nylon carbon fibre is up to the task for Vroomba parts. Which is good to know, as I plan on using it to build a lightweight chassis for the next version of the world's fastest Roomba.